Hello once again, welcome to Monaco and the PokerStars and Monte Carlo Casino EPT. Day three of the main event begins. 107 players start the day, how many will end it? Six levels to play today. That means 12 hours of Cards Up coverage here on PokerStars TV. I am James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. I don't want to say Monaco's expensive, but Scrooge McDuck has to fill his swimming pool with water. So here we are on the second day of our live coverage of the 5K main event. Uh, we'll pick up the action tomorrow when we play down to the final table, and that final table will play out on Saturday, playing down to a winner. A champion will receive 827,700 euros. Right now, everyone is guaranteed at least 9,660 euros, but of course, the big money is up for grabs at that six-handed final table. If you missed any of our day two coverage, let's remind you what happened during the second day of the EPT main event. We saw 385 players take their seats. The newest member of Team Pro, Kalidou So, was at our first featured table, but his stay was short-lived. Also among the early casualties, Selena Lin and Maria Konnikova. Fatima Maria de Melo fared much better. Easy Tiger. Victoria Cora Mitchell's quest for a third EPT ended just before the bubble, which was burst by James Romero. His turn straight cracking Philippe Narboni's set of kings. PSPC champ Ramon Kalilas was among the players to make the money, along with PSPC runner-up Julian Martini. The Frenchman bagged a big stack of 735k, making him second on the leaderboard coming into day three. And we have got Ramon at our first feature table of the day, along with Patrick Antonius, a former EPT champ who made the final table of this main event last year. Looks like the clock is already running. Play already underway here on day three, kicking off level 16 with the blinds at 2,000, 5,000 with a big blind ante of 5K. So let's get to it. Let's go down to the main stage and deal the first hand of the day. One hundred and seven remain. Trying to get down to the final two or three tables. Not sure if we'll get there. Big field to cut through here in Monte Carlo. Action is on Patrick Antonius, and he's opened under the gun plus one with pocket deuces, raising to twelve k. Thank you, Patrick. Oh boy. By the way, I'm saying oh boy, this guy's name, not the fact that he's pocket yeah, aces. Really well, Nikolai. Vaskoboynikov from Belarus. Well done. Re-raises to 34,000. Ramon Kalilas has Jackson the small blind and starts the hand with 26 big blinds. My goodness, good thing we didn't start coverage one hand later. Fear of four bet shove is coming. What no can you do? Notice the shot clock is in play today, by the way. What can you do? 10 seconds for Ramon to make a decision. And he decides to move all in. Good thing he waited till the clock was almost out or else he wouldn't get any action. The fold from Patrick, snap That's call bad. from Vaska Boynikov. And it's Domination Nation with the PSPC champ at risk. Will Ramon remain? <laughs> Statistics say no. He is a four to one dog with five cards to come. Here we go. 10-9-4 on the flop, ace is holding. Two favorable cards for Jax. 
Yeah, oh. could get a sweat on the turn right now. His immediate outs are the Jack of Hearts and the Jack of Spades. Nope. Still two outs. Only two cards that Ramon can hit to survive. River card is an eight, mm. and we lose Ramon Kalilis on the first hand of day three. Will he ever run good? Out in 107th place, cashing for 9,660 euros. <laughs> this is what happens when I always good luck to people. Um, yeah, okay. Some people just run bad in big situations. So let's just name check all of the players on the main stage right now. Two Romanians, Yannet Voinia and Vlad Dari. We've met Vasko Boynikov. He's the guy who KO'd Ramon Kalilis. Patrick playing an above average stack, 64 bigs. We've got online qualified Georgios Kitsios from Greece. Man Schecker from Switzerland and Jonas Lauch from Germany, who is the shorty with just 12 bigs. I think it's fair to say he is in the danger zone. Danger zone. And we come back to the oh feature boy. table, and we have a three-way all-in by the looks of things. Nope. Just Dari all-in with ace-eight, dominated by Patrick's ace-king. These two are destined to tangle. It was the pocket sevens that started the action. Dari shoved. Patrick reshoved, and that is two pair on the flop for DeRee. It's domination rotation. The dead man's hand is currently out in front. Oh boy. However, Patrick has a lot of outs. <laughs> 17 of them. 17 outs? Yeah, this is too many outs syndrome, right? There is no way he hits any of those cards. Uh, 17 is so many. Uh, the black two, is that good? No. Nope. I saw black two up there. It was the two of spades. <laughs> what? The flush draw. The club's no good. Why do they make them so similar looking? Well, that's why some people choose to play with the four color deck, and they like their clubs to be green. Green clubs. So Dari opens with 7-6 suited. Antonius is in with Jack-9 suited. I like this guy's first name because it reminds me of Donut. All right. We played together last time. We're going four we ways to the together. flop. Look at you, Fernandez. Little pot odds Those lover, you. Ace, eight, eight, ten, eight, eight, deuce, oh, two spades. Fun flop for no. Patrick. Yeah, yeah it's because I also didn't play that much lately. Queen high is actually Wasn't the best that. hand at the moment. Yeah. Checks around. I qualified. And a pair of queens now the best hand. Patrick's yeah, still with a yeah, yeah, no. considerable amount of equity. Yeah, he's got the straight draw, he's got the flush draw. It's impossible there are so many Austrian guys. But I don't play that much in the last time. Yeah, the last one and a half year didn't play that much. Why you are lazy? And Patrick doing other stuff. Pretty wise to not let this check around again. Of course, he's going to run into top pair. Try to win this one, and then I'm lazy again. No, 800 is not enough to retire. It's true. It's it's right. So it gets called in one spot by Voinia, and we're going heads up to the river. Too many outs again? Nope, just enough. No problem. 
Lithuania checks. And I'm not sure how much pa action Patrick can get here. Even if he had an ace, he might have checked the flop and bet the turn. It's not a slam dunk call. 65K into 99K. There's a lot out there that's beating a queen. And the river's certainly doing him no favors either. I mean, doing him the favor of letting him get away from this. He was good in 10 Yeah. Second, yeah. That's okay. not good. It's not like good. I lost the kid. Oh, he calls. Mm -hmm. no, Patrick good. gets paid off. Antonius, Antonius. Nice pot, Pat. <laughs> he calls him Pat. <laughs> I'm going to start calling him Pat. Well, yes, it could be worse. Slightly less condescending than Patty. Patty's like endearing, at least, though. Pat's just. Nothing. Table chip leader with 374k. Nice one, Pat. <laughs> Always good to win at the beginning. Well, those of you who wanted to see Limitless in action, you're going to get your wish. Chip leader Victor Malinovsky in a hand against Malika Rezavi. So this hand has gone to the river. Action is on Victor. He's just played a time bank card, buying himself an additional 30 seconds thinking time. Each player gets five time bank cards at the start of each day. Cards they don't use get bagged with their chips and brought back for the following day. Counting out the bet, a sizable bet, snap called. <laughs> Ace, queen for Victor, that's two pair. King nine for Rizavi, trip nines. Easy game. And that was a huge pot, by the way, which sees Victor drop down to 530K. Nice Malika now on 440K. I really did think that you would have, like, uh, queen. All right, you won the hand. <laughs> and that is the elimination of Juan Jiming. Juan Jamming. I mean, we are now down to 98 players. Oh, look at this. Let's see us. With a cheeky little gut shot. A not so great gut shot up against the high card, the over cards, the heart draw of Ace King. No consideration of a raise here from Fernandez. Just insta calls. It's an eight on the turn. A repeat eight. Fernandez checks again. Okay. That is a big bet. That is a big, big bet. 40,000 to 64,000. Fernandez just folds two overs in the nut flush draw? Are you serial? Okay. What the heck? We're going out into the field once again. In fact, we're going back to Fatima's table. She's all in. Uh oh. And looks like the shelf has got through. Is it? Oh, you you count. But now you have Couldn't you confirm? Yeah, I know. That's why she goes out there to get the chips. Is it rude? I would just let the dealer give them. Am I making the dealer work too hard? Can only no, you can't. I know, I know, I know. You're right. 
Very well, staying out in the field, we're going over to table eight where it's Ooh. Victor Malinowski against Seth Davis going to the river, which makes the board straightier. Action on Limitless. Start of day chip leader Malinowski, who's had a pretty torrid level. Shot clock is running. A bet of 90,000 just before the timer hits zero. Action on Seth Davis. You know how Limitless is watching on his phone? The EPT rap. He's riding on the river. Davis folds. So Limitless gets some back, shows an eight. Okay. And this table, table eight, will be coming to the main stage after the break. For the second level of the day, we'll be switching things up. So we'll have Limitless, we'll have Malika Razavi, Jean Fontaine, who won the EPT National in Barcelona last year. Also, Army Bearer and 2010 Monte Carlo champion Nicola Schwiti. So, a fun lineup. Very cool feature table. Looking forward to that. Very fun table. We've got action here. Back up on the stage. What did we miss? Got the nut straight for Kitsius. Top pair for Fernandez. Top. Not two pair, excuse me, not top two pair, but two pair for Shacker. This is pretty gross. 145,000 in the middle. Fernandez bet his top pair here on the turn, got called by Shacker's two pair. Ketsios raising now, I like the raise. Just over a min raise. Once this goes bet, call, raise, I think you can actually fold here. I mean, you can. Right. Remember when he folded two overs in, a, hmm? in the nut flush draw before? Now you move on. I might even consider folding if I'm Shacker. Yeah, night I can leave in the morning and... Uh, and 22,000 yeah. is a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. For the tax reason? A lot of reason. I like it a lot. I've been thir 13 years. Thank you. Yeah. The whole family. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's so boring, you know? No, it's not. It's only boring if you're a single guy and you want to party. Mm -hmm. Party is the worst here, mm -hmm. but uh, life is very good. This is a quarter of his chips. I was thinking that by calling, Fernandez might have saved him. Dash Dash says, yeah, right, Mr. Commentator. You are not folding, you are going all in. I really don't see how I'm possibly doing well in this spot with Ace-10. Once it goes, yeah, good fold. Once it goes, bet, I call, raise, they call. Like, what What are you going to be up against? Absolutely. So heads up to the river. Nine of hearts does not change anything. Kitsios has a lock on this with Broadway. It goes check, check. Tricky. I think sometimes one of the hands you'll be up against. It. it could be a draw, something you're beating, but 
I found two of them, but these 10 is not looking great in that spot. So you wanted Limitless, you've got him. Victor Malinowski started the day as tournament chip leader. He is no longer in that situation. An 86 big blind stack, so still very comfortable. Average chips right now at 297K. Army Bearer is now the big stack at this table, but not sure if he's actually the overall chip leader. We've also got Malika Rezavi. We've got Seth Davis, Jean Fontaine, Nicholas Schwiti, Ramon Mikel. Ramon! Not the Ramon. Oh. There's more than one? So the new player at the table, Spraggy, Evie Vidve, an online qualifier from Norway, has played a couple of EPTs in the past in Malta and Tallinn, but has never played an event this big. Started playing poker in home games with her friends. Dabbles around online, has played the Sunday Million from time to time. Her biggest result today, a 48th place finish in the Norwegian Championship for 4,000 euros. Nice, and someone in the chat just pointed out that uh, keeping up appearances is also very popular in Norway. So potentially, she too is a keeping up appearances fan. Okay, people in the Nordic nations, can you please explain to me, as a Brit, as someone who's meant to love this show because it's quintessentially English humor, why you like it and we think it's terrible? Seth Davis raising with aces, called by Shweeti with the ace 10 suited. You're about two. And Limitless is in as well from the small blind with king five of clubs. And flops pretty reasonably, finds a top pair, a little bit for everybody here. Yeah. Shweeti with the straight draw, back door. Well, 60% of a royal flush at this point, but aces for Davies. This is one of those boards with the aces where you're not going to be thrilled about getting too much action. Obviously, you have the overpair to the board. There's plenty of bad turns, a 10, a queen, a king. It can get pretty hairy trying to get three streets of value. Got a bet and a call. Yeah, Malinowski folded his pair of kings. Would have improved to two pair on the turn. Shweeti has picked up the nut flush draw to go with his straight draw. It's a really disciplined, good fold there on the flop with the king five. Obviously, we see it would have improved, but it was behind. We spoke about some bad turns, but this is a pretty good one. I'd expect Davies to look for some more value on his hand now. 60. He goes pretty big. I think he's choosing a bigger sizing here because there's still plenty of hands to get called by king queens, king tens. Obviously, something like ace ten of spades, but jack x of spades as well, like a queen jack of spades or a jack ten of spades. And a lot of the stronger hands probably want to play quite quickly on this flop, given how connected it is. So he's just looking to charge those top pairs or those big draws. Shweeti's got 35 bigs behind, facing this bet of 60k. Plays a time bank card. It's a pretty tough spot if, Shui if you're Shweeti. I mean, you do have position, but there's not going to be too many opportunities to bluff any river that doesn't already improve you, I wouldn't imagine. At the same time, you do have, what, 12, 12 outs? Potentially the ace is going to be live sometimes as well. Oh. We can see that it isn't. Wow. And makes the jam. And a quick Quickly call called. from Seth Davis. So Nicola Schwiti, the 2010 Monte Carlo champion at risk here, looking for a spade or a queen on the river. 12 cards he can hit to survive. I believe he is the last remaining former Monte Carlo champion. The river is a queen, makes the straight, ace is cracked, and Shweeti doubles up. Now playing a stack of 491,000. Shweeti playing more than 80 bigs. 
And Seth Davis is left with a 60 big blind stack. He is above <coughs> average, but not the powerhouse he once was. We're heading to the outer table, Spraggy. Sounds like Fatima Maria de Melo is in action. Looks like it's an all-in and a call. And Fatima is the at-risk player. She tables eights. Sylvain Mazzi tables tens. Domination Nation. Oh, what a flop. Oh, wow. A house against quads. And quad eight hold. Fatima, you've won. Come back. You have four of a kind. I saw the club. It's <laughs> How do you not see that you flopped quads? I was like, fuck it then. I was like, what is, it, what is she doing? You normally call it. You see? Yeah, but I, I, thought this one, I, I thought this one you see. Yeah, okay, no. You know what I saw, honestly? That's how, like, no, wait, wait, I saw the wait. eight and then I saw the ten. I was like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's weird, right? I also saw first the eight, then the ten, and, and, then, I and then I also saw the other eight. Well, I did not for make it. <laughs> I don't fucking... It's, like it's weird how the ring Just works. for eight. It's weird. You guys. No. He still has an out. <laughs> I was like, did no, any... I was I thinking... I no, but yeah. I was thinking... Moment, like, I was thinking, shit, did anyone fold an eight? Anything. I would like to know now. You know, like I was yeah, thinking that yeah, on the yeah. turn, actually. Nobody wow. folded an eight. <laughs> Nobody folded an eight. We know now. <laughs> well, you we guys already knew. Knew. <laughs> <laughs> It's just on you. Huh. It's okay. on you now. Oh, okay. Fold is possible. Yeah, I was because of the shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very well, quiet. I also didn't see. I thought. Uh, yeah, I thought it was. <laughs> oh, I'm happy I could fold. <laughs> I mean, not that happy. Thirty nine. Whatever hands. That's what he was raising on you. Yeah, no, I usually get lucky in those type of hands when I'm like. <laughs> So Shweetie's opened with King Queen. Razavi has three bet with Ace Jack. Woodface got pocket jacks and is all in for 13 big blinds. You did get lucky, it looks like. Huh? It looks like you did get lucky. Save 12k. I think Shweetie's going to find himself with a pretty easy fold facing the action. Well, he is getting a count just to make sure. The problem for him is if he flats here, given that Razavi's already made the three bet, can easily see more action. So he has to get out of the way, and Razavi's just going to be priced into call. We'll be all in and on our backs. I am enjoying the uh, awesome views of Nicholas Sweetie's head. Yeah, me too. He's, uh, he's kind of sprawling at the table, which isn't helping our coverage. So far, so good for Jax. Or 10 9 suited. Oh, that's a... It's a good head, to be fair. Absolute unit. No ace on the river. And Evie will double up through Malika. So she's now playing a 31 big blind stack. Mazavi's still the table chip leader with more than 100 bigs. Army Bearer, the other player at this table with a 100 big blind stack. We are at the 3 6 blind level with still an hour to play until the blinds go up again. 90 minute levels of the EPT main event. Yeah, you did fold aces for sure. You, you fold aces all the time. I know. Now I'm sure you have. So nearly halfway through this level, 82 players remaining. Seven ways, 15,000. Eight, four, ten, four, coming out again with the king six of hearts. Uh oh, aces. So we're playing T6K, right? So big blind of 6,000, 3,000, 6,000, which means we'd pay here about 30 big blinds deep. Raises is up to 41,000.
Barad does have position. And a decent enough price to call. So flats with the king six suited, and we are going heads up to the flop. Excuse me, sorry, can I get an Americana with milk? Yeah, with milk. An ace king five flop, top set for Vidvi, second pair for Bearer. Check, check. I think I like this check on Widvi. I mean, she's definitely still going to have jacks and queens and tens, which will be scared on this board. So she may be able to induce a bluff from her opponent or potentially get value from a king on later streets. Something like king six, of course, but king queen, king jack. She's going to start betting now because there's 133,000 chips in her stack. So she can't get it in over one street. She needs to be able to bet two. Unfortunately, Ferrer, right on top of things, is just going to make the lay down. Well, she chips up to a 37 big blind stack. We're heading to the outer tables. And a player who was on our feature table yesterday, Roman Lewis, has just been eliminated. Cashes out for nearly 11,000 euros, takes us down to 81 players. On call on five. And we have an all in and a call here. Timothy Adams against Yusupu Jalba. Jalba the player at risk. It's Jacks against tens. Jalba with the tens, needs to hit, does not hit. And that will see his elimination in 81st place. So that takes us down to 80, and it takes Timothy Adams up to 875K. He is going to be second in chips overall. But he is not chip leader. This guy is Paul Michaelis, the EPT Prague 2018 champ. He's got 925K. So Ludovic Geilek still in the top five, but Adams and Michaelis have now moved ahead of him. So it's Malinowski. Still with the best hand. But Bearer at the moment doing the betting from the big blind. So a continuation bet of 16K from Malinowski. The check raise from Army Bearer to 68K. Delayed C bet after it went check, check on the flop. Uh, Bearer definitely capable of having a lot of two pairs from the big blind, but Malinowski having checked back the flop, correct? Yep. And yeah, having checked back the flop, he's got to be pretty happy with his hand still. Comes in for a call. If he thinks his opponent is bluffing. He wants him to keep doing so on safe rivers. I'd imagine his plan is to call off all of the chips. It is set up for a just less than pot-sized river jam. Army Barra does not get that. And he does decide to check. For Malinowski here, I mean, if he raises the turn and then checks the river, it depends whether he thinks he could do it with a bear king. And if he does, he'll try and make a value shove against it. That's what we see here. He's all in. Surely just posturing again from Barrett. I don't think we're going to see the ace I look up into the muck. I'm going to smile right away, man. Come on. 
<laughs> Why? How can that smile? Yeah, he's happy. It was an immediate smile, though. It wasn't even like a second to think about it. <laughs> I always smile, whatever. Like even if it was to. It was um, it's a relief. Smile. A smile. He was very re re relieved when you showed your hand. Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> no, no, no blood, no blood. Nice hand, anyway. Yeah. No, oh, she, no, like she, she'll be, you'll be in the rail for her. I'll be. Know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Was that an invitation to your rail? <laughs> you could if you wish. I don't mind. There's many. I'll do you the list for you. Who's, uh, who's interested, you guys? <laughs> uh, James? I always should have right at it. Yes, Braggy. Seven dudes soft suit in the cutoff. Raises to 12,000. We just spoke about being on the feature table, and someone said this is their moment in the limelight, their moment to do something. Well, Limitless has limitless potential with the seven and the two. I mean, there's a possibility to make one of two pairs. A pre-flop quad draw. Both. The worst hand in No Limit Hold'em. Seven, deuce, offsuit. And three calls. Rizavi with the threes. Whitby with the jack ten. And Seth Davis with eight, four suited in the big. And I don't think Seven Deuce is going to get a fold here. I would love to see a bet, though. Channel some Otvam. Oh, he's going for it. Chips in the abyss. That's what they look like. Zavi, absolutely delighted to make a set on a board with an ace and a queen on as well. For that reason, do you think this is going to be a raise? Well, the problem with raising is you just look incredibly strong. Raising a bet multi-way with two players, well, three players still to act behind you. 65. She is going to raise, and I guess that's the end of the hand. I mean, I, there's just no chance that we ever see a rebuff here. Um... You know, it's, it's just too strong. I mean, Evie's sitting there with a gut shot straight draw. Any chance she gets involved playing a 30 big blind stack? I don't think so. I don't think she has quite enough. She has unders to the board. It, maybe it's a little better. Let's say the board is 8, 9, 4, and she has something like queen 10. You know, with a gut shot there, you have Why potentially you two overs. But with two unders and no backdoor flush draw, <laughs> Limitless shows the seven deuce off suit. Nice race. I think you re bluff you, you're me. Gonna, you're going to see. You re bluff me for sure. I, I, I almost. Yeah, it's okay. I'll show you. Only once. Aye, okay. But you would see it later That's anyway. Pretty, uh, you would see it later anyway. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. You had to get one of those before we got off the stream table. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's when you heard, like, oh, we're moving. That's a pretty artistic way like, to bust, like, like you know, you just jam me. into a set with seven deuce. He wants to be like a hand on game. And as promised, we have a new feature table up on the main stage. We have got Fatima Maria DeMelo from Team PokerStars Pro. We've got Remy Castignon, a former EPT main event champion. And we've got Timothy Adams, an EPT high roller regular. 68 players remain from the 922 total entries. A prize pool in this year's main event of nearly 4.5 million euros. Everyone's now guaranteed at least 12,790 euros. Everyone chasing a seat at the final table. That final table will play on Saturday. The top seven will all get six-figure scores, with the winner receiving 827,700 euros. Can I get um, we will know still water, please? Yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> as well. Casting on, under the gun, folds. As long as you're plus okay. 18, it's all good. Uh, Is it, though, Fatima? Not sure that server is plus 18. 18 plus. Well, zero plus 18, I guess. The evil Zaytun in the cutoff. Hey, his hoodie. Yeah. Not my words. Yep. Not my words, Joe. You can't just 
wear a hoodie that says evil and then expect to be not called evil. Makes it 17,000 with Queen 10. Fatima, ace five suited. Is this just a peel with 16 big blinds? No, it's an all in. Sorry, Sprague, you didn't get a chance to answer. I would have said it's an all in. I have a counter. We see Fatima all in and the uh, calculating Zaytun is probably just going to fold. Pure, unmitigated, unadulterated evil. Malice runs through his veins. Oh, you and know, Queen makes 10 flies into the muck. So mad to have to fold. He'll have his vengeance. You win this one, DeMello. Outer table action. Malika Razavi versus Jean Fontaine. Or Rafiki, as I like to call him. You can see the board is sitting out there. King, 10, 9, ace. I think that was a tray there. Looks like she is facing a bet of 76,000. Not just getting that verified. 76,000 it is. Straighty board. No flushes. Oh, it's getting counted out. That's a call. Fontaine Mux. Doesn't even matter what she has, but she's going to show anyway. Like a boss. Nine. It's a pair of nines, ladies and wow. gentlemen. That is fourth pair. Malika Razavi has been quite impressive. Not the first hero call we've seen her make. If you saw her in yesterday's tournament, you know she's got the stomach for poker. Well done. I can just read people easier, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> One player to a hand, so no three-eyed ravens. All in. Fatima, no Herrera, DeMello, all in from the cutoff. Ace, Jack. Uh-oh. Very, un very unfortunate for her that the player in position on the button has Ace, King. Which is a dominating hand. Just a call from Castellon. The blinds are going to fold. So Fatima is all in and at risk and behind. It is domination nation. Only three live cards at the moment for Fatima. I'm really hoping for a jack. I don't feel shit. He feels it or <laughs> not. Know. It's up to him. I don't know. I feel it. Again, my Mandarin isn't perfect. Jack, right in the window. Hello. He's feeling it right now. Domination. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. Rotation. That'll do it. Fatima takes the lead. And now just one card to come after the safe eight. No king, and she'll find the double up in chips. Double up, she does. 144, I guess. I love In my mind, I have less. I'm not counting while I'm not looking well. I don't like that voice. I'm going to change the voice. 
It's not a good voice. Not very interesting. I have my little friends. All right, guys, more outer table action. Massive pot between Nicholas Schwede and Malika Razavi. Pre flop, this hand was four bet. That means it was a raise and then a re raise and then another raise. 142K in the middle before the flop even came out, which was ace nine tray. Schwede bet 44,000, and we just saw. I believe Malika call when we got to this hand. Check. Queen of spades in the turn. Schweedy checks. Action on Razavi. Who checks? And we've got a five on the river. Action on former Monte Carlo champion. He looks like a champion. Hanging out there all burly, getting massaged. Note the gold wristband, right wrist, yeah. right arm. Check. Don't Checks. just give those out. Back over to Razavi. She checks back. Sweetie shows ace four for top pair. And that wow. is good. Kings. And of a champion. What do we think Razavi had, guys? Feels like kings. So raise from under the gun off a fairly short stack, one of the shortest at the table. I think the ace king of diamonds of Deira most likely looking to three bet and play for stacks. There we go, 48,000 is the raise. Goes fairly small here. You don't really need to go too big since your opponent's short anyway. Oh, uh oh, this one could get really interesting. Rascala behind with two oh, kings. Man. Man, this is so brutal. So brutal for someone like Deira. I mean, it could be brutal for Rascala too, depending on if an ace hits or not. But these sorts of situations in a tournament. You've got ace king suitor to hand that you're almost never going to get away from pre flop. Dara starts the hand with 41 big blinds. It's a very awkward stack size. And somehow, in the, the first three positions queen jack, ace king, pocket kings can someone wake up with aces? Well, that's the thing. I, I just wonder how Dara's going to react to this because it is the first three positions where you know everybody's going to be at their tightest and it goes under the gun open plus one three bets plus two four bets mm. and let's think about this as well Deira was three betting versus someone who had a short stack so he's not really going to put in many bluffs versus a short stack under the gun opener so Riscala should be aware that Deira's range is pretty strong which means he in turn is not going to bluff against it very much so Deira may be able to realize here that Rascala has a really, really strong hand. The problem is his hand, too, is right in the top 5%. Yeah, and he just has to be all in. And we're all in, both players, you'd imagine. Oh, excuse me, he's called. Everybody relax. We're off to a flop. Just a call, and given what the cards actually are, obviously, 
Like the oh call, and this is it. I'm so sorry, but you're just destined to go broke here when this happens. I mean, you could have got it in pre-flop. No one would have faulted you. Now, if you don't get it in on the flop, you, you're, you're a worse player. Uh, if you somehow get away from this. It's so cruel to see the one remaining king. If he misses the board, he probably gets away. If he hits his ace, he's going to win the pot. But to find the one remaining king... It's probably going to send him broke. It's just so unlucky. <laughs> well, what does he lose to here? Obviously, tens and sevens and king ten, but they don't four bet pre flop. So he loses to pocket kings. There's only one way to make that. He loses to pocket aces, but he has the ace of diamonds. And how There's many combinations ways of pocket kings are there out there, Spraggy? Right, that's one combination <laughs> of kings, three combinations of aces. That's not a lot of combinations. And rainy season has fired back up again in the UK. Somehow Dara is, he's just not out yet, is all I can say. He's calling. Is there any version of this where Dara does not go broke? He knows it, he can feel it. Nine of spades on the turn. I think there's just too great a possibility that he's chopping as well, right? Like, it's very, very possible his opponent has ace-king some of the time, too. And if he's ever bluffing, I don't know, something like ace-queen of spades on this turn and shoves, it's a disaster to fold ace-king. So I just don't think there's a way that Dara can get away. Maybe I am wrong. There's the all-in. There's the shove. Yep. I mean, Rascala probably thinks he's up against what, aces? Potentially. There's yeah, the call. Yeah, he has to make the call. Such a, such a sad board. Dayra. Dayra. Time to say goodnight to Dayra. Drawing dead in just a really, really disgusting cooler. Yeah, I know. He knows. We all know. We don't know what to say. Yeah. So sorry. A really, really gross cooler. These are the featured table chip counts. We will be back with Aladdin Rascala still on top here. More from EPT Monte Carlo when we return. You are watching Poker Stars TV.